What's up guys? It's me Harrison with Ormson Aquarium Design. Uh, if you know what this is, you know where this video is already going. Or if you know what this is and you follow Waru Joey, then you know where this is going. Uh, the other day, I bought this Gamma Seal lid and this Lowe's 5 gallon bucket at Lowe's. I spent like a total of 6 bucks on it, I think. Super cheap. I was anticipating that these would be actually more expensive than they were. But they're super cheap, like in the paint section where all the buckets are at Lowe's. And I'm going to be building a DIY canister filter. Uh, I'm probably going to be using the same, uh, or at least a very similar design to what are in Joey's videos. So if you want a more in-depth video, I'm going to go through the whole motions of building this because I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be adapting his design to fit on my tank better. But um, yeah, if you want to know how to do these without watching this video or just more about it, you can watch his videos as well. Uh, it's going to be for this tank. Uh, the flow I have in here is just too low. Uh, if you want to know why, I'm going to be putting in another video on filtration, another one on substrates as well, but basically I'm going to have another video on filtration that explains why I need higher flow. This one is rated for 129 gallons per hour, and the filter itself is rated for 55 gallons, a 55 gallon aquarium. This is 20 gallon long. Most people say, oh, they just read the front of the box and it says this is good for a 55 gallon. But no, it's not. It doesn't always work like that. And most of the time, in a high tech situation or something along these lines, it's not going to work out properly. So I'm going to be building a DIY canister filter for this. Basically, a triple down, trickle down setup. I'm going to have inlet in the top, and then outlet down here. Ball valves on each end, and I need to figure out a way to do uh, the PVC piping that you use with the uni seals and convert that over to the rubber or the flexible hosing that I have on these lily pipes right here because I don't want to buy new big lily pipes. These ones fit really good and I want to be able to still have the flexible hosing, you know, stuff like that. So I'm going to figure out a way to adapt those onto PVC and I'll have probably a 250 gallon per hour, 260 gallon per hour, somewhere around there, uh, pump outside, dry the water back up into the tank. So. This, prob this project is probably going to take a week or so. Uh, I still need to order a bunch of stuff. I'm still waiting on a few other things. So this is how it starts. All right, guys. So it's a few days later. Finally have all the things I need to set up this filter. So I'm just going to run through materials and then just get right back into uh, building the thing. So for making the holes for the piping and stuff in your bucket, you're going to need a drill, power drill, with a uh, whatever size, um, if you're using uniseals like I am, whatever size the uniseal like website says you'll need. I went with half inch uh, uniseals and make sure you read what the uniseal website says because a half inch uniseal does not fit a half inch tube. So let me show you. This is a 15 millimeter or half inch PVC pipe. This is a half inch advertised uniseal and it just goes right on and then slid down. So I had assumed that the half inch would fit a half inch tube, but obviously not. So um, what I bought is these little guys. These will go on the end of this and then fit in this uniseal much better. So I don't have to buy new uniseals. But um, so yeah, so you'll use the hole saw to drill the holes you need that are specifically like sized for the uniseal. I'm using a one and a quarter inch uh, hole saw for the half inch uniseal. And then we have some other things. This is the filter I went with. I want right around 200 gallons per hour. So this is a 250 gallon per hour um, filter. I paid 50 bucks for this on Amazon. That's not gonna wanna come out with one hand. But um, yeah, so. I bought these little guys, the little quick, dis quick disconnect things, and I can unscrew this on the other end. Um, this is just so I would be able to disconnect the actual filter from you know the hoses and stuff like that. And I bought two sets of each, and it turns out the uh, fittings that came with my filter, uh, this one goes threads into this part, and then it's got a little spot for a, a hose, and this one threads into the top and neither of them fit really well on this uh, the half inch clear tubing that I have. So just for kind of, yeah, uh, I just 
fit these on there just to see if they would fit and they were the exact same threads and this this way I can just use straight uh, PVC pipe and go straight into that fitting but yeah so that's what I'm gonna be using there I will have these ball valves on either end of the bucket one on top one on the bottom somewhere I haven't decided where yet and I have two of these guys to go into the both uniseals top and bottom and then I have an elbow just in case I want to turn something around and then since uh, these don't come with like a little clamp down or anything like that bought some half inch stainless steel clamps and this is just some other stuff that came with a filter and uh, all-purpose cement for the PVC and then over here you're gonna need something to cut your little hosing and stuff like that and this is just a reactor I'm setting up an inline reactor for co2 in this tank so I'll do probably a video on this thing later um, and then another thing to separate the um, what's it called the media this is what I'm using this egg crate stuff I'll just make layers of this and then put my media on top of those layer layers just like Joey does in his video and then to cut this I'm gonna be using a, probably a combination of a hacksaw and I have a Dremel downstairs so you'll want either a hacksaw or a Dremel both is better but um, either one of those to cut this kind of stuff so yeah uh, I'll start doing some stuff and then get back to you all so after you drill the holes with your hole saw you're gonna to want to take like a really sharp knife I use a really sharp knife a razor blade or a box cutter will work fine as well and just shave off all the little uh, stuff left over after you drill the hole there's gonna be little you know little just little pieces of uh, plastic probably surrounding it you want to have that area really clean and then once you've cleaned that up you just want to press both the uniseals in and then you're gonna start cutting PVC and making your fittings and stuff and gluing stuff together. All right, so I just realized I made a mistake here. Um, if you're gonna be using a pump outside and you're just gonna wanna run tubing straight from here to here, you definitely wanna line up where they're gonna come together. Obviously, that's not really gonna work. Um, I'm not gonna be getting a new bucket or anything. I'm just gonna rest the filter itself, the bucket, when it's on the ground, I'll rest this on like a book or something like that to elevate it up a little bit higher so they're on the same level. But uh, if you're doing this at home, make sure you line up the area. Maybe just make a circle around where this comes up to that and then uh, mark that and that's where you want to drill your hole. All right, so we've just hit hiccup number two. And hiccup number two being these fittings and these fittings are both 13 millimeter. So I need a hose that has a 12 millimeter inside diameter such as the Eheim hosing that is 12 millimeter inside 16 outside and I thought I had that I don't know why I didn't realize this before but um this is like probably 15 millimeter inside diameter so I need to find a hose and an adapter to go from this to a hose for that size such as 12 inside diameter because this fits perfectly around here if I can just one second that'll fit really good on that with a clamp but I need to find a way to go from this to that so I'm probably gonna go back to the store at some point soon and find a fitting for that so, okay. so um, I was trying to find a way to get that to that like I said and earlier this is what came with the um, what's it called uh, pump this one was supposed to go on top of it like this but I said um, I don't like the way that fits so I put this on so I could go from straight PVC to this and so I didn't need this one anymore but it turns out this fits the Eheim size that I need that will go to this really good. So, uh, and I also have one of these guys. And like I said, these guys already thread in to this thing and this came with that filter. So it's the same threads. So I'll be able to use this thing in order to get from this size tubing to that size tubing. I just need to find some clear that size tubing or I'll be using the Eheim stuff again. All right, so working through problems, uh, I got 
I had to reroute where my CO2 comes from, which is a good thing because now it's kind of like hidden and I can easily adjust it without having to bend over these tanks here. I can just go down here and turn the little nozzle right there and cleared up a bunch of space for where the filter's gonna go. Filter will go in the back corner, the pump will go over here and it'll run up both pipes right here. And I got, uh, I found the perfect book to make this line up. It's one of my favorite books of all time, The Communist Manifesto. Just kidding. Uh, good thing about being a college student, there's plenty of textbooks sitting around. I should probably sell these to pay for more tank stuff. But yeah, so uh, uh, I've got that going. Got the pump and bucket lined up. It's hanging off the side now. Got the pump and bucket lined up pretty solid. And I'm going to go to the store in a little bit to get the right size hosing, and we should be all good to go. I'm not exactly sure when the last time I did an update on, or last time I worked on this, but uh, I'm finishing it up today. I bought a few more things that I just, I changed the design around a little bit, and I'll go over that in a minute as well. But uh, I should have everything I need now. Everything is over being, everything's drying after being cemented. So half inch with uh, these little guys. There's a piece of PVC pipe obviously in there. This is a just a little fitting for the smaller hosing that I bought. I ended up going with, um, I had this stuff. And you know, it's, you're not really gonna be able to tell, but obviously this is uh, a little bit smaller. This fits over my Lily pipes really well. And it fits this fitting a little bit loose because this inside diameter is a half inch and this outside diameter is a half inch so I'm going to zip tie this one closed and I'm also using this one this fitting as a water is flowing that way so water won't be coming down and going like outside of the fitting it'll just be going into the hose from here the other one where the hosing will be connected the flexible tubing is this one and the hosing fits pretty tight around here this is probably a, a half inch down here, and then it's got these big flares, so it fits really nice in there. But yeah, so basically how it's going to work is uh, for the uniseals, obviously I have these little guys. Uh, those will fit really snug in there because the half inch tubing I bought, just it didn't fit the way I wanted it to. So I've got ball valve. Um, where is this going? This is going up, so it'll go like this. Actually, yeah, so this is the top one. It'll go right there like that. It'll come into the filter, go down through all the layers of media that I'm, I'm gonna use this for, uh, stacking the media in different layers. And then these are still curing, so I can't really set it up right now, but these are both threads, and those will thread into the pump right here. So this one, I can screw this one in and the other one in. That'll go right there. This one will thread in here, and obviously this one will go straight into the uniseal right here, and water will come through here, out here, and come from a, to a flexible hosing that will probably be clamped onto this or zip tied, I'm not 100% sure yet. I'll probably use a clamp just for to make it easier. And that'll come up here go into my CO2 reactor. The CO2 reactor will come up over here and come into the tank through the lily pipe. But yeah, so it's a super simple setup. Uh, took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do and how I was gonna do it. But uh, once I have, once I got everything that I wanted, it was super simple. So uh, I'll, this will cure for a while and then I'll set the whole thing up and show you. All it's right. Like. The cement stuff that I'm using to hold all this together has been curing for about two hours which is how long it says it needs to cure so let's put it together don't forget to use Teflon tape for all of your threads that you'll be using I have it looks like four different spots Ooh, four different spots with threads I'll be taping all of those up everything else is basically glued together so I got this one this one and these are two threaded ones that the threads go into. So that goes there, that goes there, that threads in. That's where the water will be coming 
out of the filter and back into the tank, right? And then basically we're just going to take these pipes and kind of stick them in the uniseal and just kind of, oh, sorry about that, just kind of wave them around and kind of push them down in there. It looks like they're seating pretty well. That looks like a pretty tight fit, so I think that's going to work out well. Same thing with the bottom one. And that's what they look like, both of them seated in the uniseal. They look pretty solid in there. I don't think they're going to leak. I'm not really worried about it at all. But, uh, if you, I guess if you, uh, if you do the wrong way like I did and buy the wrong uniseals or whatever, um, this is looking pretty promising. I'll obviously let y'all know if it leaks, but, uh, that's how I did it. If you buy the wrong the ones, these, uh, like I said, these, um, fittings I got don't exactly fit perfectly. Like, careful. I'm going to break that. This will just go straight on and off like that it's not really sealing so I'm gonna take uh, these little guys these little clamps put it down over there and then tighten this down and make that watertight and I'm using this one instead of this one here for a reason water will be flowing down into this one and out of this one if I were to do it the other way around and this one wasn't watertight the water would come outside kinda like that where the fitting and the hose met so kind of a little side note, if you, on the off chance that you decide to run a uh, CO2 reactor on top of your filter like this, um, I think I'm going to end up doing this anyways, but uh, I think, it, the, see, obviously this doesn't stay, it's lightweight plastic, and this is a pretty stiff kind of uh, tubing, but um, you can see it falling across and stuff like that, obviously when it's filled with water, That'll weight it down enough to where it doesn't move. I'm going to tape mine, like just double-sided tape, and hold it down in here. But it would be pretty cool if you took a, a PVC pipe, just a, a short PVC pipe, that fit around this so you had like a little seat for it. I'll probably end up doing something like that later on down the road. But that's how it goes on. Um, hose goes to here, and then I have, uh, obviously, this reactor in between it. But normally you would just take this hose up to your lily pipe and so, into the tank. So the filter is in place. Um, I have it open like that because I'm going to, uh, sorry, going to uh, drain some of the tank water in there and then take the filter media just in this little basket that can, comes in normal canister, fil canister filter, I can't talk right now, um, and just set that in the bucket for now. And then, so I can just get a filter running on this. It's starting to get a little bit dirty uh, and I kind of want to see how it works and make sure it doesn't leak, obviously. Got this little snail. All right, um, but yeah, and then while everything is working, I'll get to work on making uh, the little step things for media, and I'll buy some new media and fill the whole thing up. It's taking a really long time with this hose. Come on, I'm trying to fill up the bucket. And perfect idea, or perfect example of why you want to have little quick disconnects and ball valves and stuff. As I was filling this up, I almost got it all the way full, and I realized a little bit of water was leaking, so I had to close that ball valve and screw off this little guy. I'm going to add some more um, Teflon tape to it, and thread it back in and tighten it back down. Alright, so, got that back on, tightened everything back down, and it's not leaking anymore, so I'm going to continue filling the bucket and then put everything back together. All right, so I've put everything together, and it is time for the moment of truth, but I definitely like the clear tubing as opposed to the green Eheim tubing. It's much less noticeable in the tank, and it looks just much better. But um, yeah, I'm actually pretty nervous right now. We'll plug this in, and Hopefully it'll work. If I can plug it in. Oh, it bent. Wow. Very anticlimactic. <laughs> Straighten out this prong a little bit. <laughs> Alright. Try it again. And it's in. And we are flowing. And it's about to come to the top of the filter. Oh. Oh yeah. It's working. 
a little bit surprised, but yeah. Um, I'll have to find a way to get this thing perfectly straight. And yeah, this is pretty cool. Definitely higher flow, but I'll have to turn it off because the uh, this uh, little thing on the uh, reactor is leaking because I don't have a CO2 setup hooked on right now. So I'll fix that and turn it All back. Right, so got the filter back running, and I used a little, uh, just a little, you know, typical little cap thing for uh, an air stone or something like that, an airline. Got that going. Uh, this was like half air and as that's I'm assuming that's just because there was still water in the top of this and now that's back to normal the flow is definitely a lot more than I had with the old Eheim canister filter I love the Eheim it's a great filter just doesn't have enough flow I'm probably gonna use it for a 10 gallon and that's the thing um, filters a lot of people just don't know what they need filter wise um, most people wouldn't think that you have a five gallon bucket with 250 gallons per hour in a 20 gallon tank. Uh, that's just because this style tank needs it. It's a high tech stuff, it needs a lot of flow. But for another high tech tank like this, I'm gonna have like 120 gallons per hour or something like that with this fil with that filter. But yeah, so uh, things I'm going to do, uh, add a little hose clamp here or some tape or something like that. It is leaking a little bit. Just very slowly leaking out of that, and I, I had anticipated that a little bit, but yeah. Anyways, uh, I'll probably get some PVC p piping that fits right around this, and I'm going to shave this little bottom suction cup thing off, and then have like a little cup holder for it, so it just fits right perfectly in the, in the bucket like that. Because right now it's slanted it, and I just don't like it. Um, I'm going to move some stuff around, probably put some of this flexible hosing and some warm water to get it to flex the way I want it to and reshape. But yeah, other than that, I really like it, and I hope that uh, this video was helpful to you guys. If I missed anything or you have any questions on what kind of stuff I use or how I did it, uh, let me know in the comments section. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you next time.